Hi everyone, I'm here finally making this makeup video that I've been promising you. I'm sorry it's not the prettiest one, but I'm gonna go through everything really quickly so that uh, you have an idea of what I do at least for my makeup before your competition on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, just as, as a disclaimer before we get started, of course you're beautiful no matter if you're wearing makeup or not wearing makeup, so don't feel like you have to wear makeup. Um, I just thought it might be nice to kind of emphasize your eyes and your mouth um, and just your facial features so that people who are sitting kind of farther away in the courtroom can see what expressions you're making. So um, with that being said, uh, feel free to ask me if you have any questions about any of the products I'm using or how I'm putting them on. And um, just remember that everybody's face is different in terms of their skin type and in terms of you know their face shape and their eye shape and their mouth shape and everything. So um, what works for me not, might not work for you. So don't feel like you have to get these things. Don't feel like you have to use all of these things. You can use some or none, of, none at all. So with that being said, I'll get started. Um, the first thing I always do is I put on primer. Uh, this is the one I'm using right now. It's from Ulta. It's called Matte Face Primer, oil-free, paraben-free pore refining. So it's um, really clear and you just, you can kind of see it. Um, you just put like a pea size amount on and you rub it all over your face. This is actually my second take, um, so I just put it on my face. <laughs> Sorry about that, but you just take a little and you rub it on all these places here. And it, this kind at least helps my pores look smaller. I don't know if you guys have that problem, but um, that's great. And it also makes your makeup last longer and it um, helps it stick to your face better. So I highly recommend using some sort of primer. It seems like there's no point to it since it's clear, but it does help smooths out your skin too. The other thing is um, my nose gets more oily than the rest of my face and it gets oily faster. So I've been using this stuff. It's by Benefit, so you can get it at Ulta. It's called the Pore Professional Matte Rescue. And um, it comes in this little tube and I just take the tiniest amount, like the mouth is sticking out right now, if you can see it. And I just put it on my nose and I just put it on, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's like super matte right now. So that's awesome. I really recommend it. Um, it lasts forever since you just have to use a tiny amount. So that's great. Uh, the next thing I always do is I do my color correcting. So what that means is that some people have places on their skin that's a little red or a little blue, and you kind of want to even it out and make it more skin tone looking before you put on all the rest of your makeup. Otherwise, if you don't do this step, you end up using a lot more concealer and a lot more foundation. So it seems like, again, why do I have this other step? Um, but you know, it saves some of the other makeup products you're gonna use, and for me, it provides more coverage too. So I really like that. So you can see right here, I have some red on my nose and on my, I, mean, I say my nose and I point my cheeks, and my cheeks and my nose and a little bit on my eyebrows right there and sometimes a little bit on my chin. So my favorite thing to use, it's by It Cosmetics, so you can also get that at Ulta. I don't know if you can see it, but there it is. It's called Bye Bye Redness and it comes in this little pot. Yep. <laughs> this is probably like my third one. I love this step. It's probably one of my favorite things in my whole makeup kit. So I take a brush like this. It's basically a small foundation brush. I think it's technically for concealer, but I think it's way too big for concealer. And I just dip it in the pot, which looks kind of like this because mine's running out. And I just put it on any place that looks red. And as you can see, it works instantly. And it's like amazing. I love it so much. Most color correctors come in the color that's opposite of what you're trying to correct. So um, if you're trying to correct redness, you get a green color corrector. If you're trying to correct um, blue, like under your eyes, like if you have dark circles, you get a yellow color corrector. So um, I like this kind that's already kind of skin tone because I don't have to worry as much about blending it in, not looking like an alien with like green streaks on my face. So that's just me. This one is a little more pricey than um, some of the other ones you can get that are just green or yellow. So that's up to you, but those work too. So I've covered up most of my red splotches. I'm doing this really fast, so my makeup's not gonna be per perfect, but I just wanted to kind of take you through everything. So once you're done with that, my next step is I use a BB cream. I talked to some of you guys about this. My favorite one is this one by Garnier. I've been using this for years. 
Um, I get the one for oily slash combination skin. I used to get the hydrating one, but I made my skin look like more oily more quickly. So I just switched to this one, I like it. I get it in medium deep. There's also a light slash medium. So there are two colors. <laughs> Um, and it has SPF in it. Super important that your stuff has SPF in it, people. I know people tell you this all the time, but guys, like SPF is so important. You spend so much time in the sun, even when you're not thinking about it, even just like walking to your car um, or driving. And the more your sun get, your skin gets exposed to the sun, that's how you get wrinkles and stuff. I know you don't think about it now, and trust me, I didn't think about it when I was your age either. But in the last couple of years, I've been thinking about it, <laughs> wishing I had worn sunblock. And I know like normal sunblock like is all sticky and who wants to do that? So this is the perfect way to do it. Have it mixed into your BB cream. In case anyone is wondering what a BB cream is, it's a mixture of, let's see, it says on here, I think. No, it doesn't say, it just says five in one. But it's basically a mixture of moisturizer, sunblock, and like a tinted formula. Um, some of the other ones do different things. You know, they fight acne or they cover your wrinkles or whatever else you're trying to go for. For me, I mostly just use it as like a tinted moisturizer and like a base for my foundation. Now, again, you don't have to do all these steps, but whatever you're wearing, make sure you're wearing something that has sunscreen in it. Trust me, you'll thank me in like 10 years. <laughs> okay, so I'm done putting that on. You can tell like, Put an even layer, I dropped the lid, of um, my BB cream all over my face. You can tell on my skin tone is kind of starting to look more even. So, last step of that, foundation. I'm using this one, I hesitate to even show it to you because I'm not gonna buy it again, I don't like it. It's Revlon Youth FX Fill Plus Blur Foundation. I thought it could help me make, make me look younger, but I don't really like it. But it does also have sunblock in it. So now I have two layers that have sunblock in it. Actually, I did my first. Yeah, so um, that's great. The more the better. So, as I said before, if you use this stuff, like a BB cream or a um, color corrector or whatever, you don't have to use as much foundation. So you can see how much I'm putting on. I'm putting on like barely anything. Um, you mostly just won't need to put it in like the center of your face. So like your nose right here, like a little bit on your forehead. Um, and like a little bit on your chin. Most people say like you put more makeup in the middle and then you kind of like fade out. So um, what I like to do is take a beauty blender, which I left mine in the other room, but um, I have a mini one here with me, so I'm just gonna use this, but most of them are bigger. They're like little sponges. Um, what most people do is get them wet and then wring them out and then use it to blend their foundation. It sounds weird, but it makes you look all airbrushed and cool. Um, I'm not gonna wet mine because not feeling it right now so literally you just dab your foundation like I'm doing right now just dab it in all the places where you put it it's very important that you don't swipe because if you swipe you're just gonna take off that foundation and all the layers you put underneath so don't swipe just dab it might take you a little bit but it'll be worth it and you see if you matched all your stuff right you won't be able to tell where your foundation ends and the rest of your skin begins. I'm having to get really close to the mirror because I had to take off my glasses and I'm not wearing my contacts right now. I'm guessing some of you guys have the same problem since you were, most of you wear glasses too. It's okay. Don't let wearing glasses stop you from wearing makeup. You can do it too. Okay, so I'm looking pretty good. I don't know how it looks on camera, but Again, this isn't like my best makeup, but I'm just doing it really fast so you guys can see it. Okay, moving on, trying to go fast. Um, I like to wear an eyeshadow base. So I don't know if you can tell, you probably can, but my eyelids are kind of like discolored a little bit, and that's pretty common. So I like to put something on it to even out the tone and also um, make your eye makeup last longer. So my favorite one, I've been using it for years, a lot of people have, it's the Urban Decay. Um, eyeshadow primer potion. I always get it in the shade Eden, like the Garden of Eden. So I take the tiniest amount, this much, it's like nothing, and I plop it on one eye, and then on the other eye, I start to blend it in. In other words, I split it between the two eyes. I just kind of rub it all over my eyelid, all the way up to my eyebrow, all the way over to my nose, and do it on the other side too, where I plopped it down. 
and you can probably tell, I know I can, my eyelids look amazing. <laughs> They look so much better. Sometimes in the morning if I don't have time to do anything else, like I, for on my eyes, I just do this and it makes me look more put together. So that stuff is great. Again, this one has lasted me like, I don't even know, probably like two years or something. It lasts forever because you use such a tiny amount. Okay, next, um, concealer. So, you know, I under eye circled. Some of you probably do, maybe, maybe not. Um, maybe it depends on the day, so. Um, what some people do is they match their concealer to their foundation color and what other people do is they use a shade lighter of concealer almost as like a highlight. So you can do whichever one you feel like doing. Um, this is my favorite concealer right now. It's the Maybelline Fit Me. This is what it looks like. You can kind of see the little label right there. It comes in like 5 million colors, hence the name. I am in 20, which is Sand Sable. So. You just dot that around your eyes like this. And if you don't use enough, you can always go back and do more. And then you take your little beauty blender and you just dab it the same way you dabbed your foundation. Dab, 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 dab. Don't drag it because that's how you get eye wrinkles. The skin under your eyes is super delicate. So keep that in mind. I'm sorry my voice sounds kind of like hoarse. I don't know what's happening. Sorry guys. I don't have water next to me except for the sink. Which I guess I could do, but it's okay. Okay. So as you can see, I blended all my concealer. You can also tell that you can kind of still see my dark circles. I didn't use that much. So I'm putting a little bit more in some of the spots I missed, which is okay. It's better to actually not use too much concealer under your eyes because the more you use, then it gets like cakey under there. And a lot of people, myself included, have like tiny wrinkles under their eyes when they smile and stuff. And if you have that and you're wearing a lot of concealer, it like creeps into those wrinkles and then it looks strange. All right, well that's as good as it's gonna get right now. The other thing is what some other people do is they put their concealer all the way down to like here, like in a triangle shape, to like mid cheek. It's a look, people do it. I do it sometimes, I just didn't do it right now. I did it this morning, I think. So then to make your concealer stay in place and not come off when you're all sweaty or just running around throughout the day, it's important to set your concealer with a powder. Most people use a translucent powder that's um, pretty fine. I use this one by e.l.f., that's the lid. It's in this tiny little jar. It's tiny, it's like two bucks at Target. So um, it's just like, it looks like a white powder, but they call it translucent. You just put it on your little sponge thing that you've been using to blend everything. And you just press it onto where you had the concealer. Some people do this for their whole face with a bigger sponge that doesn't take forever. Um, and that really will lock your makeup into place and it won't go anywhere. I'm not gonna do that right now, but it works, trust me. So, there you go. It's also important to make sure you do that before you get those little eye wrinkles in your makeup. So if you you were looking around and you got them, all you can do is pull your eye down a little bit, swipe the wrinkles away with your uh, finger, and then put the powder. Because as soon as you put the powder, that's how it's gonna lock it into place. So if you put it on top of the little wrinkles, the little wrinkles are gonna be there forever. <laughs> At least for the rest of the day. Okay, so then it's important to put powder on the rest of your face so that your makeup doesn't go everywhere. So your foundation probably feels a little bit almost like wet or tacky right now. That's about to go away. So I use this uh, powder. It's by Physicians Formula. It's called Mineral Wear Mineral Loose Powder. It says talc free on it. And that's important to me. I don't know if you guys have been watching the news and stuff, but um, talc has basically been shown to cause ovarian cancer. So... <laughs> That's only when people use it in certain areas and stuff, but I'm not taking any chances, so I'm trying to use as few products as possible that have talc in it. Anyway, so I get this one. I get it in this like translucent medium color, which is like close to my skin tone, to give me even more coverage. But they also sell this same brand, um, just translucent, so just clear. So if you wanna get that, you can, whatever you feel like. So you just brush it all over your face. It'll make you look more airbrushed, and when you fill your face, it won't feel tacky or wet anymore. 
So done with that. So moving on to the fun stuff. Um, let's see. We talked about eyelash curlers, some of you girls. Um, again, most people think it's a, like an unnecessary step, but it really makes your eyes look more open and awake. If you haven't done this before, it might take a couple tries to practice because it kind of looks like a medieval torture device, but um, it's not that bad as long as you aim uh, correctly. So you just like put it, like sandwich your eyelashes between the two clamps and then push it closed for a couple seconds and then let it go. Now you do the same thing on the other side. And you probably can't even tell the difference until you put on mascara, so there's not really anything to see here. But that's all you do with these things. Again, you can get them for like $2. I think even like e.l.f. sells them at Target. They'll last you forever because there's nothing to wear out or anything. Okay, next, uh, we talked about eyebrows. That's usually what I do next. So my favorite eyebrow thing, I bought this. This is probably maybe my 10th one or something, and I have two more in my drawer. Um, it's Maybelline Brow Precise. I'm trying to see if you can see it. There we go. It's a pencil, I don't know if you can see right there, but it's a pencil, like a normal pencil. It's not like one of those mechanical pencils. It's like one you sharpen with a sharpener. Um, that's my favorite to use. It gives you like a softer look. So yeah. And then the other end of the pencil is like a little brush thing like this. Also a very important tool. Trust me, you'll see. So you just take it and you fill in your natural eyebrows. So let's see, I don't know if you can see me. I have to get kind of close to the mirror because I don't have my glasses on. So we'll see how this goes. So as you can see, I'm kind of filling in where my natural eyebrows are. It doesn't mean your eyebrows are balding or anything, but it helps to, you notice like after you start wearing it that when you aren't wearing it, it's like something's missing when you're looking at pictures and stuff. So just filling it in. I like to have a nice even line along the bottom. Kind of defining this is my eyebrow area. Now you don't have to press that hard. And if you just do long strokes, it looks more natural. Um, if you mess up and do like a really hard stroke or do one just like that where I just kind of missed my eyebrow, it's okay. Just keep on going. I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Okay, I need to sharpen my pencil. You can probably hear it scraping on my skin. Okay, so that's basically it. Now, you, as I said, I messed up like a little bit right here. Kinda went too high, it's a little dark. I have a few little dark spots where I did it too hard. So then, that's when this handy brush end comes in handy and you literally just brush through your eyebrows. I suggest going through the whole thing at least once, but then if there are any problem spots like I just identified, you can go back and do it kind of repeatedly and it softens the look. It's very handy. So then it doesn't have to be perfect when you do it the first time around. All right, so eyebrows are done. I probably look kind of crazy because none of the rest of my makeup is on, but now you've seen it. Um, okay, so the next thing is for our makeup look, we talked about doing a little bit of brown in the corners. So I'm gonna use this brown that I have from ColourPop. It's a brand that they only sell online and it's awesome because everything's super cheap. Um, this is $5 and yeah, it's great. This is their Super Shock Shadow in the color three. They don't all have numbers, but this one does randomly. Anyway, you can see it, it's brown. It has a little bit of shimmeries in it for fun. So I just take my finger and we just talked about doing it in the corners. So if you close your eye in the crease where your eye opens and closes, just put it there and like the outer like third of your eye. Outer third to a half. Just put it there. Put as much or as little as you want. You can dab it or you can lightly rub it. Again, don't rub things too hard in your eye area because that's how you get wrinkles. Okay. So you can kind of see what I did. You can always take a brush to like blend it out some or just blend it with your finger like I'm doing depending on what kind of eyeshadow you have. 
Again, this is supposed to be like the easy makeup video, so try not to do anything too crazy. Okay, so you have the brown there. All right. Next, what I do is the black eyeshadow. So this is my favorite one. It looks like this. It's liquid eyeliner. I think I said eyeshadow before, but this is liquid eyeliner. It's Revlon Color Stay. Probably see it. Liquid liner in black. So I have two bottles here because one is running out. I'm not sure which one I'm holding. But this is what the brush looks like. It's really tiny. So you just drag it along your lower lash line. I mean your upper lash line. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. Starting from the corner. This takes some practice. So um, do it in a time when you're not really rushed and take a deep breath when you're doing it. You don't want your hands to be shaking, but it is something that's achievable. A lot of people are intimidated by it, but you can do it too and it'll look great. So I'm trying to, so you can see. So you start in the corner. You just drag it along your lash line. It's best to kind of try and do it in one stroke because if you do little strokes, it might look more jaggedy, but you can do however you want. Then what I like to do is do a little cat eye at the end. People do them all sorts of different ways, but this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to start from the outside and then make it connect, but you can also start from the inside and go out. So like this, Whoop. it's kind of a weird looking one, but this happens like basically when anyone's doing these. Comes out different every time. And I'm just going back in and filling in some little gaps. Trying to make my wing look a little better there. All right, so that's basically it. Do the same thing on the other side. Sorry, I'm kind of blocking the camera. Go back, fill in stuff. Oh! I totally missed. Sorry guys. And that's how your lines end up getting thicker. If you miss, just make your line a little bit thicker. Of course, if it keeps getting ridiculously thick, you might have to just wipe it off and start over again. That's one advantage for girls that wear glasses. If you mess up a little bit, it'll probably be hidden behind your glasses. Also for girls that wear glasses, don't think that means you like can't wear eye makeup or whatever. It actually means that your eye makeup needs to be a little bit bolder because otherwise people won't notice it, frankly. I learned that reading a magazine article and it's so true. So um, next I take a pencil, a soft pencil. Uh, my favorite one is L'Oreal Silk Isimi. There are the words. It's a weird name. And um, it's eyeliner in the color black. And I just put it on the bottom eyelid. Most people don't use liquid eyeliner on the top eyelid. You can also use this stuff on the top. So if you are not wanting to do the liquid eyeliner, or you're just starting out with eyeliner, totally recommend using this stuff on the top. It is awesome. It feels more like a crayon instead of a pencil, so it's not like hurting your eye. So I really like it. Next, mascara. This is my current favorite one. It's by Essence, which means it's really cheap. It's called the False Lashes Mascara Dramatic Volume Unlimited. I got it from Ulta on a whim and I really like it. So uh, you wanna put it at the base of your eyelashes and wiggle back and forth for what seems like a really long time and then pull it up. That's how your eyelashes get really voluminous looking. No, I don't know why this is a thing, but this is something everyone will tell you. Sorry, you're looking up my nose. So you just keep doing that throughout your eyelash. Even in the little corners, you can go back and kind of even it out. Oh, guys, I got mascara on my eyelid. Well, if you get mascara on your eyelid, it's okay. You can take it off with a little Q-tip. I'm not gonna bother because I don't have any right next to me, but you can do that. Do a little on the bottom. You don't have to worry too much about wiggling it on the bottom because you don't want to look like you have crazy spidery eyelashes on the bottom. All right, now doing the other side. Wiggle, wiggle. 
Wiggle, wiggle, pull up. Wiggle, wiggle, pull up. Go back and even it out. You can do it on the bottom. Now what some people do is go back and do another layer. So I'd go back right now and do another layer. I'm not going to because I'm going to wash this all off and go to bed, but it's one idea. All right, I'm getting to the end here. Next blush, the one I'm currently using that I think looks good for this makeup look is called, it's just CoverGirl. It's called Iced Plum, color 510. It looks good for my skin tone. You probably have a different looking one for your skin tone. This is what my color looks like. So I take a blush brush, kind of small and fluffy for reference. You can see how big it is compared to my hand. It's not that big. It's kind of the size of like the apples in my cheek if you see here. So you just take a little blush, not too much to start, and start in the apples of your cheek. You go upwards along your cheekbone, kind of the top of your ear. Always start with a little because you can build it up and add more. So I'm going back and adding a little bit more. You can just blend it out. I know, you're probably like, oh, Miss Tinkins, I don't usually need blush, but how much better does it look with blush? It looks awesome. I know. <laughs> All right, second to last step, lipstick. I know some of you guys went and bought Raisin Rapture, which I kind of want to go buy because it looks awesome, but I don't have that color. But this one I think is like kind of similar. Um, this is one I have from, what company is this? Oh, Maybelline. It's called Plum Perfect, and it comes in this light purple tube. Anyway, I like it. So lipstick, I definitely suggest lining your lips before doing this. I forgot to bring eyeliner or lip liner with me, but um, it helps it not to like seep out around your lips like during the day, like when you're eating or drinking or smiling or laughing. So um, that's something I recommend. Try and get it in a nude color. Um, then it will be less 80s looking. Um, I know it's before your time, but Trust me, any nude color would be awesome. Also recommend putting on chapstick like a few hours before you put on your makeup or the night before. If you put it on right before your lipstick, it'll just like slide all over the place. So pretend I did chapstick a few hours ago, line my lips with nude lip liner, and now I'm doing the lipstick. All right, guys. It's actually would have gone a lot better if I had used lip liner. Nevertheless. All right, that's not bad. It's okay. Like I said, this is kind of crazy haphazard makeup, but you can see it's probably kind of similar to the tone you got. I tried to match it a little bit. Um, You know, swish your lips together. Once that's done, a little trick so that it doesn't get on your teeth. You might've heard this before. It sounds weird, but it works. Um, you put your finger in your mouth and like make a, like, a, like you're a straw kind of, and then pull your finger out. So I'm gonna do it, see? And I don't know if you can see on my finger, but see all that stuff? That's lipstick and that all would've ended up on my teeth. I don't know why it's a thing, but it totally works. Last step I do is I put on a makeup setting spray. Again, makes your makeup last forever. I don't use it that often unless I'm something where I'm gonna get my picture taken a lot or I'm not gonna be able to touch up my makeup for like a million hours. So I use this Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. There you go, you can see it. It's a little pricey, but it's a big bottle and it's lasted me a while. I use it before like special events, like you could use it before prom or something or um, just some time when you're not gonna be able to touch up your makeup. So you just hold it pretty far from your face and you spritz it like that. You're supposed to do it in an X and a T and stuff. I don't use that much of it because it's expensive. So use as much as you want. And one last tip, don't go away. I 
I highly suggest bringing some sort of powder with you to the competition so that when your nose or forehead inevitably gets shiny, it happens to the best of us, um, you can touch yourself up right before a round in the competition. So whatever powder you wanna get, probably a pressed powder, it's easier to carry around that matches with your skin tone, go for it. I like this one a lot, it's the NYX Blotting Powder, so you can get it at Ulta, Target, places like that. Um, I got it in medium dark. Um, when you open it, it looks like this, which does not look like medium dark, but it's totally fine. So I actually lost the little powder puff that went with it. It fell on the floor and ew. Um, so I just use it with my finger, but all you do is like, let's say my nose was um, shiny. You just like take some with your puff or with your finger and just like tap it on your nose or forehead or wherever. And it wasn't shiny because I just did all my makeup, but it makes it go away like instantly. This stuff is like magic. It's the first time I bought this and I definitely will be buying it again. Also really suggest bringing your lipstick uh, with you. Clearly you're gonna be eating, um, you, know, for, you know, whatever. So um, you're gonna need to touch that up too. So I'm sorry this was pretty long, but hopefully it helped you and hopefully you like the look for the competition. Um, if the lipstick is too dark that you guys got, remember that you can always um, take a tissue or some toilet paper and go like this, fold it and put it between your lips. Just do that over and over until you get it to the desired lightness. You can also kind of blot it like this by hand. Just don't get it all outside of your lips. So that might be a little better for you as well. So I hope you like everything. Best of luck this weekend. I'm excited for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.